earlier we spoke with epidemiologist Dr Christopher Labos and he said the speed at which Omicron is spreading across Canada is surprising even to medical experts. Rise in Omicron has surpassed, I think, most people's expectations. Uh, it's spread very, very quickly. The point to remember, though, and this is an important point that sometimes gets lost, because we've sort of maxed out our testing capacity, it's almost certain that the real number of cases is higher than what's being reported because a lot of people who would otherwise go and get tested just can't get appointments to get a PCR test. So those numbers of about 10,000 cases is probably an underestimate. There's probably a much larger number of people who are sick with COVID and have either stayed home because they can't get a test or have gotten a rapid test and whose results are not reflected in the uh, official government statistics. How worrying is it to you right now on that point of testing that it is so hard for people to go access a test? In fact, in some parts of the country, people are being told if you have symptoms, just assume you have COVID. Well, it's very worrisome because at the very least, what you want to have is you want to have good data so that you know how bad the problem is. The minute you have this problem of, of non-access to tests, um, you, you're, you're, you no longer have a good grasp of how big uh, the problem actually is. You can no longer know for certain how severe the virus is because now the denominator of cases is, is off. So anytime you add uncertainty in a situation, the harder it becomes to control and the harder it becomes to have uh, to, to put a um, appropriate plan in place. And talking of plans, a lot of people will have had plans with their loved ones yesterday on Christmas. We've got New Year's Eve just a few days away as well. How worried are you about how things might look two weeks from now? Uh, fairly worried. I've seen anecdotal reports of people posting photos of large family gatherings and you sort of wonder like, oh, is this going to, you know, are, are a bunch of the people going to be sick two weeks from now? I think this is the real problem. The other, w one of the reasons we're probably underestimating the impact of Omicron is the access to testing. But part of it too is that, you know, people tend not to go and get tested during the holidays. They tend to sort of put stuff off. So, Come the first week of January, I think there's a very real worry that we're going to start to see a surge of cases. And the real, real worry on that is that that surge of cases is then going to lead to a surge of hospitalizations early to mid-January. Yeah, and even when we hear that maybe Omicron is milder, when you have, you know, these economies of scale, if you have that many people falling sick, of course, we know that that will mean more people get to that point of being hospitalized, ending up in intensive care. We were talking during the fourth wave about hospitals and medical staff having to triage patients, decide who would would get what care if the resources got stretched. How worried are you that hospitals will get back to that point? I think it's a very real possibility. I think if you look at what's happening with the airline industry now where they're canceling a bunch of flights, I think it underscores the problem. It's like, yes, you can in theory build more planes, but if you don't have the people who to, to fly them, it doesn't do you any good. And same with hospitals. You can put hospital beds in like unused parts of the hospital or in other places. But if you don't have the personnel to staff them to take care of them, it, it doesn't matter. And there is a there is a physical limit to our healthcare system and it's not going to take much to overwhelm it. I mean, our health our healthcare system gets stretched during most winters because of the flu. When you have a bad COVID season, if you have a lot of COVID cases ending up in hospital, it, it's, it's not going to be easy to overwhelm. And so we just sort of naturally assume that you know, when you get sick, there'll be a bed for you at the hospital. Be, you, know, you, you can go there and it won't be an issue. And I think we have to start to at least entertain the possibility that we might not, that might not actually be true. And of course, we often think about the healthcare system as, you know, beds and buildings, but it is those healthcare workers as well. We're hearing stories about them falling ill or having to isolate, being taken out of the workforce, which just adds to that strain. I'm wondering if you can tell me how you and your colleagues are feeling right now as you brace for this potentially fifth wave of COVID. Well, I think everyone's stressed, everyone's tired, everyone's fed up. Uh, and here's the thing, it's like, yes, people are, first of all, you have people getting sick because of COVID and so people are off and so it's very hard to, to staff uh, hospitals and clinics, but also people are just getting frustrated and tired. And I think you, you've already seen the exodus of a certain number of people from the healthcare system going to either private practice or to other fields of medicine or a sort of um, other fields outside of medicine. So I think we have to realize that at a certain point, people do get tired, people do get fed up. Some people will take early retirement and it's in, at a certain point, human beings can only take so much. So if this continues for much longer, I think you're really gonna start to see the issue of, of a personnel shortage. 
I want to ask you about restrictions as well because it is such a patchwork across the country. We're seeing, uh, for instance, Nunavut has a lockdown. Quebec has some stricter measures coming into effect today, the day after Christmas, New Brunswick tomorrow, then Saskatchewan has no gathering limits. How do you feel about that patchwork of measures at this point in time and what should be done instead? Well, it's, I, can, I can certainly understand why people are confused and frustrated because we obviously consume the news from across the country. And so people say, well, why is this province doing that and this province doing that? Why is this province offering boosters to everybody and this province only offering to boosters above a certain age? Uh, so I understand why people are, are confused. And this is unfortunately a consequence of the fact that healthcare is a provincial jurisdiction, so every province handles things differently. I, I think it is reasonable for there to be some differences between provinces based on the situation. So when you're talking about, you know, do you have to have a, a, a full lockdown or not, that kind of depends on the epidemiological situation. So I can understand the point for some regional variation. But it would be nice if we had a little bit more consistency across the country so that we had sort of one message to Canadians and so that they weren't getting these sort of conflicting stories and not really knowing what, you know, where the truth actually lies. And on that point of a message to Canadians, many people will be feeling they're just ready to throw caution to the wind, feeling they've followed all the rules till now, they've got their vaccinations, uh, they've done their part and they want to get together for New Year's or just kind of ignore those public health measures that are in place. What's your message to them right now? So there's an argument against cutting off your nose to spite your face. Uh, as frustrated as people might be, having a large gathering is not going to serve you well in the long term. You may get sick, the people around you, you, may, you may, may get sick, and even if you get over it, even if you have a mild infection that doesn't make you severely ill, it's going to have a negative impact on the healthcare system, and that's going to lead to not just people in hospital, but it's also going to lead to cancelled surgeries, it's going to lead to longer wait times, it's going to be harder for you to access medical care, even non-COVID medical care down the road, if the wait times for surgeries gets longer and longer and longer because we have to keep cancelling surgeries because the beds are full. So there is a, there is a, you know, a lot, there, there's a very profound domino effect that can happen here. So protect yourself, protect the healthcare system, protect society as a whole. And you do that by really just downscaling your plans and not having too many person-to-person -person contacts. Speak to people over the phone, have a video chat, do something. Try to avoid person-to-person -person contact, at least for now, at least until the worst of Omicron is behind us.